guys, Coach Gaglione here. This is another edition of our Meet at Monday Tips. This is going to kind of wrap up our kind of training through pain series. And one of the most important things that's kind of, I feel like, is overlooked uh, when it comes to getting out of pain and recovering is what we call kind of getting parasympathetic or just kind of turning on the nervous, the part of the nervous system that kind of triggers kind of rest and digest. In this case, we're talking about rest and recovery. Um, so one of the things that I think is overlooked, and it's something that is near and dear to my heart because I don't always do it myself, and I'll kind of explain why, is actually doing like some sort of cool down. Um, I would say this is more popular in maybe track and field and maybe even in like some team sports where you maybe they do some kind of post-workout stretching. Uh, and you can kind of argue if the stretching has any benefit on flexibility and things like that. But I think there's a nice, from a ner nervous system standpoint, I think there's a benefit from doing some sort of kind of stretching um, and the re just some sort of light activity that's gonna kind of allow your brain to kind of focus and kind of start to kind of shift from a sympathetic state, which is kind of that fight or flight state uh, to a parasympathetic state, which is more of a rest and recovery state. So this isn't to say that being in a sympathetic state is bad. So just kind of like back in the day, uh, back way back in the day, uh, if we were kind of like say fighting off, offending a saber tooth tiger or kind of running for our life, that sympathetic response is really important. So it's getting our kind of body firing on all cylinders. So if we're like for someone like myself, if I'm going for like an 800 pound squat, that's like really heavy for me. Uh, I'm going to want to be sympathetic for that. I don't want to be in like a restful state when I'm trying to squat 800 pounds. But after that, that event is done and after my hard training is done, uh, getting in that restful state is key. So if I can turn on the parasympathetic nervous system, kind of the thought and the, the thought behind it is that it's going to start the recovery process that much sooner. Um, so basically once we're kind of done with our hard training, I think doing some sort of cool down is important. Uh, one of the things, again, with myself, this isn't like good or bad, it's just my situation. I just know personally, a lot of times I'll do my training here at Gaglione Strength with our team. So I'll do all our max effort stuff, our heavy stuff. Basically anything that's kind of worth, uh, worth anything important with a barbell I do here. Uh, but I will oftentimes, because of just because of a time's sake and just because this is kind of technically quote unquote my place of work, I don't always have time to finish my accessories here. So I usually do those at a commercial gym. Um, so usually I will take that time, especially when I do my, my accessory workouts and I kind of finish my workouts, I will always tr uh, tr make an effort and I've been doing a good job of that. So pat on the back for me of doing some sort of cool down uh, post workout, especially on those accessory days. Ideally, I'd like to do it all the time. Ideally, I'd like to do it with our groups here. Uh, sometimes the problem is sometimes if you have like say a 700 pound squatter in a group and then the 500 pound squatter, usually the 700 pound squatter, even with if you do the warm, right out the warmest ahead of time, usually they're gonna take a little bit longer to train. They're gonna need a little bit more rest and recovery. You know, the lighter weight females, they're gonna usually tend to finish a little bit quicker than the heavyweight men just because it just takes a little bit longer to work, work up to their, their working weights. So um, in a perfect world, I'd love to have some sort of kind of team cool down, but so this is why I'm kind of shooting this video is also for them. Uh, so I think doing some sort of cool down is gonna be really important. Uh, and again, we're using cool down as kind of really like a, a general term, but basically what we're trying to do is get into a restful state. So uh, a couple of key points when we're doing a cool down, uh, and again, I, I wish I should have reviewed my notes before, but I, I first kind of heard about this concept through Jill Miller of yoga tune-up and she would talk about a couple of key areas number one is doing some sort of kind of uh, belly or diaphragmatic breath uh, hanging upside down and getting kind of your feet above like your uh, your waist so doing so we have a video on lower back so I'm not going to kind of go through it again but obviously a part of a cool down could be something like an inversion table or using the, the Donnie Thompson Godzilla bands and kind of hanging upside down so that would be kind of that you can kind of hit all three uh, components with that I'm going to show after I do my kind of quote unquote like cool down yoga sequence, uh, I'm going to show you just some kind of really, sympath, uh, really simple diaphragmatic breathing uh, from a 90-90 position uh, with, my, my, with, my, with my heels up in a supported position. And that's how we're going to kind of finish things off. You could also just kind of do, uh, I forget what the yoga pose is called. Sorry, Emily. <laughs> I should have known better. But um, I, I've been a little bit out of practice. So uh, you could also kind of do that kind of like a starfish pose where you're just kind of lying on the floor and do some diaphragmatic breathing. So I'll, we're gonna kind of conclude with those drills. Uh, and then that's just a really good way to kind of downregulate focus and get in a restful state. So this is a cool down that I like to do. We're not really trying to do aggressive stretching here. We're just kind of using these poses uh, just to get a little bit of active movement, but also just kind of calm down the body. So it's just, you could obviously probably just breathe and meditate and be fine. Uh, but for me, just doing these yoga poses uh, just helps me just focus and getting get in that parasympathetic state that much quicker. Uh, it allows me to focus on my breath and kind of hit that kind of first target. And then eventually we can get into a little bit more once we were kind of getting the diaphragmatic breathing. Uh, 
and when we're doing these breaths, we're not breathing with a brace. We're not really trying to bear down hard. So if I was doing activation or doing a warm up, that's when I want to be a little more sympathetic and kind of really kind of get that, that, that tension dial all the way up. So these are very low tension drills. I'm just trying to relax. Uh, none of these stretches should be aggressive. So I'm going to use a foam roller because even though I've lost a lot of weight recently, uh, this allows me to just not really uh, force the stretch. You could certainly do these this sequence without a foam roller, but I just like to use a foam roller, and I feel like most gyms have it. You can use a dowel rod, you can use other things. Uh, the foam roller works for, the, and you'll kind of see like why. So the first thing we're going to do, and I'm going to try and do this in real time, and I'll talk a little bit, but I'm going to try and focus on my breath. So we're going to do hip flexor stretch. One hip, hips like headlights facing forward, so knee stacked over ankle, knee in line with the hip. And I like to kind of, you can do this a couple of ways. I can put my hands here. I can put my hands here. I could also, one thing I also like to do is just put my elbow like this. And instead of, you can do this for time, but I like to do this, you can do anywhere from three to five breaths in each position. So just for the sake of time, we're gonna do three breaths. Ideally, you wanna use nasal breathing just to make it more parasympathetic. Uh, that's not gonna be possible or else I won't be able to talk. Uh, but ideally, you wanna breathe in and out through the nose. And we wanna try and keep our rib cage stacked over our pelvis. So we're still keep stretching in a good position and breathing in a good position. So that's been, that was about three breaths. So now we're gonna to go to a hip flexor stretch to kind of, uh, uh, kind of elbow to instep stretch. So again, I'm a bigger guy. I could get my hands to the floor, but that's gonna put me in a little bit more of a, not necessarily a compromised position, but a little bit more in tension. So this is a good height for me personally, um, where I'm not going to be in too much tension. Now, sometimes from here, I might elevate the back leg. I might do some sort of kind of, you know, reaching, uh, like kind of, you know, reaching drill. I can come here, I can come here. Depending on what my goal is, if I just want to hang out and I'm just using this as a pure cool down, I may not even do that at all. Now I'm going to go into a hamstring stretch. So I'm going to extend my, my knee. I should, yeah, extend my knee. So for me personally, uh, you know, I don't want to even say I have tight hamstrings, but for me, I'd have a little bit more tension if I was had my hands all the way on the floor. So this is the foam roller gives me a nice boost here. Ideally, I don't want to be twisting out or tilting out too much. I want to be as square as possible. Now we're going to go into our hip rotator stuff. So this should be kind of like a tall pigeon. So again, by using the foam roller, I'm going to not go into too much tension. I could obviously go lower and get a deeper stretch. But again, my goal is just to cool down right now. I'm not trying to get an aggressive stretch. From here, I'll do my shin box. And this is mainly just for me. Um, I'll usually start off with my hands on the ground. And eventually, I can come here. Now, for some people, they might just need to keep their hands on the ground the whole time. That's fine. So I'm just kind of working my external and internal rotators at the same time. Now from here I'm going to do what I would consider like an anterior chain stretch where I'm kind of stretching my pecs, my quads, hip flexors all at once, even the ankles a little bit. And I'll put the foam roller behind me. Now so here I can hang out here if I'm feeling a little bit tight. If I want to deepen the stretch a little bit, I can come a little further back. I could obviously take the foam roller away and I could squeeze my butt and just look up toward the ceiling. From here, let's go into a frog. So kind of that's, I found a frog stretch to kind of stretch my groin a little bit. And I really like to do it before like a deadlift day for especially a sumo deadlift day. So I can sit back and get as wide as I feel comfortable. Now from here, I can do a bunch of different things. If I'd like, I can kind of do like a downward dog. I could do cobra. Sphinx, if you tolerate, if you want to kind of work on. So I sometimes get extension based pain, so I don't always do uh, this one personally. But if I'm trying to work on my extension a little bit, I can kind of do my Sphinx. I can do my Cobra. I can do like a modified, I can use the again, foam roller. So this is going to really be dependent on 
how your lower back tolerates some stuff. I could also, like I said before, I can kind of go to, to a downward dog. I call mine a downward pup because I'm not too good at it. So I'm going to do my downward pup. And again, I can go into my cobra. I can go to the child's pose here if I want to hang out a little bit. I want to hold the front board where I can. That's too much of a stretch here. So for me, I'm always trying to extend my back, so I really like the child's pose to get in like kind of that posterior tilt and kind of be rounded position. So that's a really good resting stretch as well. In order to get a diaphragmatic breath, I like to kind of almost breathe, put my belly and push my belly into my quads a little bit when I'm in that kind of child's pose. Now from there, I would repeat. And we'll go through this a little bit quicker since we went through So now I'll do my other leg. So I'll do my hip flexor stretch, my elbow to instep. I can rotate if I'd like. Hamstring, tall pigeon, shin box. I don't have a name for this one, so I just call it kind of an like anterior chain stretch. Frog, and then anything else I'd like to do in a diet. A frog is something I always like to do, because again, I'm a sumo deadlift, or at least I try to be. And then obviously I can do anything I want, like I can do, kind of hang out in my child's pose. I can do my cobras, downward dog, and all that kind of fun stuff. From here, uh, the last thing I like to end with is just the breathing by itself without any stretching. If you don't have some more place to put your feet, you can kind of just do your starfish pose here and just relax and take some breaths. I like to have my feet up just to keep some tension off the lower back. So something like this, if you have a bench or something, you can actually just put your feet up on the wall, uh, but this would be an excellent way to kind of cool down. I could reach and round and kind of do more of a kind of a PRI type breathing and kind of tuck in my tail and activate my hamstrings a little bit or I can just really relax here, which is fine. I'm just gonna try and breathe into my belly through my nose. And if you were to cool down, let's say you're not into all like the stretching and yoga stuff, if you're gonna do one thing to cool down, you could do this for about two minutes. You can go and do a box breathing type thing. Uh, we're gonna do a separate video on breathing, so if you're not sure what box breathing is, that's okay. But we're just gonna inhale and exhale. So you guys get the idea, otherwise I'm gonna put myself to sleep, which is the idea. Uh, but that's our video on cool downs. Uh, so this would be something you do after your workout, and the reason is you wanna get in a more restful state, a more parasympathetic state. Uh, if you're having trouble with pain, if you're having trouble with recovery, uh, try to add the cool down to your routine. See, if you just like have trouble with stress management in general, um, most of us, not all of us, but most of us are probably doing plenty in the gym already, but we could do a lot to enhance our recovery. We could do a lot to enhance um, just how we feel day to day and reduce our stress levels. So keep training hard, add the cool downs into your routine and see how you feel. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to support the channel, support the program, check out the links below. Uh, please subscribe for future content. Until next time, stay strong. We'll see you soon.